Hi guys, so today we are gonna be putting manual seat belts in the 240. My battery is dead, so I have to charge it because I haven't been driving this in a while. But anyways, as you guys, if you guys knew, uh, S13s usually came with um, automatic seat belts. My driver's side doesn't work though. But pretty much this thing goes like automatically open every time you uh, open the door. And when you close it, it's supposed to go back there to buckle you up. The passenger side works though. It usually works like this. My car is a little dirty right now, so bear with me. <clears throat> So just to give you guys a demonstration. You guys see that? So the seat belt comes from down here, the bottom. And you just buckle it like so. Then when you open the door. Yeah. Then when you close the door. I think. And now from the driver's side point of view. The driver's side doesn't work. So every time I get in and out of my car and try to buckle myself. I always have to reach down from below. And manually buckle myself. Like this. If it were to work, when you open the door, it would, it's supposed to automatically move open so I can get out, but mm, it doesn't work. Which is why I'm converting it to the manual seat belts. So to my understanding, uh, pretty much all USDM S13s came with the automatic seat belts like my car has and the non-USDM S13s such as I think like the Canadian models and the Japan models came with the manual seat belts but some people also use uh, the manual seat belts off of S14 and that's what I'm gonna be using today which is right here shout out to Josh for the hookups but yeah, we're like one month into the new year, 2019, and I haven't really much done anything to it yet. It still has the same problems as what it had when we left 2018, such as that overheating problem. So I still got, have to get to that. And pretty much, I don't really have any big plans for the car this year, but I just pretty much want to make it into like a more practical car to drive like obviously raise it up and um, get the AC going in this thing and oh yeah I still gotta fix the oil pressure sensor because it's showing I don't I'm not really pushing much oil or it shows low pressure so hopefully it's just the sensor and other minor stuff like the subframe pushings tension rods and whatnot so I started off by removing the plastics and for the black the back plastic I just put it to the side so I didn't have to um, go through the process of taking it fully off but I was able to squeeze my ratchet inside and unbolt the motor. I unbolted the window motor. I mean the seatbelt motor already. Now I just gotta do the rest of the rail. Update. Got the track and the motor out.
Uh, the plastics are back on. Besides this part right here. So I had to drill a hole for the for the top part will bolt on to the pillar. <laughs> I drilled it too low so I kind of had to go higher. But it's alright because it's going to be pretty much blocking. So after I bolt it, it'll look like this. And since I drilled too low, I had to drill higher. So instead of drilling, instead of it being too high and looking like this, at least it'll be covered. Yeah. And only if I can find like some type of cover for this so it looks like more legit. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And I don't know if you guys can see this but um so this is the the whole thing like that <laughs> inside here. So it's gonna bolt it down and it's it'll run up here go up and then I'll need a longer bolt for this side. And the end and this end right here will bolt in under the carpet there. So I ran into a minor issue. Um when when it, it pulls up and down it kinda it comes out easy but doesn't go back as easy. See? So I'm probably gonna have to um trim like underneath a little opening just to so the slack could go back in easier. So the next step was to take off the other seat belt that was over here, the lap belt that goes here to there, which was this right here. So pretty much it's just two bolts. It was like that. Two bolts over here, one and two. And then I marked where the hole was to drill a hole. bolt on um, this part so this side is pretty much done I just gotta um, oh. I just gotta find a longer bolt to mount this to the pillar then it'd be cherry so probably gonna head off to our IDs right now to just find the same bolt but a longer Longer length. So I came to AutoZone and O'Reilly's to try to find the same uh, bolt with the thread pitch, but um, I wasn't able to. So unfortunately, I'd have to go to Home Depot and try and find the bolt. I figured out what thread pitch it was though, so um, at least I got that. But AutoZone and RIs don't carry this size thread pitch. So I'll, I'm going to have to go to Home Depot to get that. I'll probably go tomorrow to grab the bolt. But I won't be able to get it done to a, a few days after. Because I have work and school after work tomorrow. So see you guys in a couple days. So today is another day and I was able to get the bolts that I needed for the top part of the seatbelt. So I'm here about to finish up the passenger side. So here's how it looks with the bolt on. And a closer view of the bottom. And I still have to trim this part 
so the seatbelt can um, move back in more freely. So let's try it out. So far, so good. Case of an accident. <coughs> but yeah, I think it's it's good. How's the retraction? So now I just have to do the driver's side. Uh, I probably won't get to that today because I have to go to school soon. So I'll probably do it this weekend. But yeah, you guys got the, you guys pretty much got the concept of the process of converting uh, the S13 automatic seat belt to manual seat belts. So yeah, guys. Just wanted to say thanks for watching so like this video and subscribe for more.